Canonical is best known for Ubuntu, but they've got plenty of other projects as well. Some of them quite successful, others not so much. For example, Ubuntu Touch. And there's a project out there called Anbox. Anbox allows for hardware level Android containerization. I've mistakenly referred to these as Android VMs before, but that's not the case. And there is a separate piece of software out there called Anbox Cloud. Anbox Cloud is a project by Canonical. This is based on the same concepts, is cloud-based, and is a proprietary project, unlike Anbox, which is under a free software license. And from my understanding, the original developer of Anbox also works or worked at Canonical. But besides that, the projects aren't linked together, they're just based on the same concepts. Why it's called Anbox Cloud, I have no idea. Now, Anbox Cloud itself isn't new. They've been working on this and pushing this for quite a few years now. But what is new is their new partnership with Vodafone, where they're making what they're referring to as a cloud smartphone. So they say, we're collaborating with Vodafone to test a new technology that uses Anbox Cloud and the power of smart mobile networks to transform TVs, computers, wearables, and other everyday objects into cloud smartphones. Honestly, at this point, the term phone doesn't even remotely mean what it used to mean. I guess at this point, the definition of phone is does it connect to a mobile network? If that's the definition we're working with, I guess I'll accept it. So this is made available not just by 5G networks, but something like this was viable on 4G as well. It's just more possible with more speed. And they say with the right teamwork and technology, it's exciting to see what's possible with 5G today. Now, from my understanding, this would have been possible on a 4G network as well, but more speed is more good. And the basic idea is as such. With the use of Canonical's Anbox Cloud, Vodafone can test a software stack that allows for the implementation of running the Android operating system in the cloud by moving all the processing to a virtual machine. Because of this, the device of choice will only need to use basic video decoding capabilities, enabling simple objects to take on smartphone tasks. Obviously though, the physical device features still need to be on the device. Things like the camera, microphone, networking, touch input, and the various sensors you might have in a modern smartphone. But then all of the software functionality, things like the apps, the data processing, the software updates, even things like the storage would be stored in the cloud. Basically in some server cluster somewhere in some random country. Effectively, what this makes is a Google Stadia phone. If you don't know what Stadia is, Stadia is a game streaming service. So basically, the only processing done on your system is sending your inputs over a network connection, receiving video, and decoding that video. This allows you to play, you know, really demanding AAA games on, like, a Raspberry Pi even. As long as you can use the Stadia client, then you can play these games. And I mean that Stadia comparison in more ways than one, where they say, similar to Vodafone's use case, Amboss Cloud allows for the ease of cloud gaming adoption by enabling graphic and memory intensive mobile games to be scaled to vast amounts of users while retaining the responsiveness and ultra low latency demanded by gamers. And this video is brought to you by Re No, we're not gonna do that. I don't think there's anyone out there who considers themselves a gamer who wants to have cloud gaming. There is certainly a target market for it, but it's not those people. And there's always the problem of, you know, the speed of light that always gets in the way of the level of latency people are expecting. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Cloud-based computing sounds absolutely horrible. And I agree for general people, nine out of 10 times, it isn't the best solution. But there are some use cases where it does make sense and it's not inherently bad. Cloud-based computing enables doing complex processing on devices which otherwise would not be able to handle that processing. So if you're in a corporate setting, you can use far cheaper devices and then move that processing into a separate location. Or in the case of a work cloud smartphone, you could have all of the workplace apps delivered directly to the device and not have to worry about the employee trying to fiddle around with it themselves. They can just get on with the rest of their day and actually do their job. 
For example, with my work, we have these Android-based scanning devices. And if there's ever a problem with the software on that device, it needs to be sent off and then dealt with by the IT guys. But if all of the software running on that device is running on an external server somewhere, the device never needs to leave the store. And this makes it logistically easier to deal with. And in a corporate or general working environment, it's fairly common to see this setup already with Windows and Linux based systems, either having all of the data stored in one central data hub and there's no storage on the actual systems, or you just literally never have the operating system running on your hardware and you're doing nothing but streaming it. Even in that context, it does have massive drawbacks. For example, if there are network issues, then you very likely are unable to get any work done whatsoever. But assuming everything is going fine, it does make it much, much easier to manage. But for general consumers, this idea of a cloud smartphone is completely different. One of the biggest concerns I have, especially with a company like Vodafone, which isn't really well known for having good data plans, is data caps. And even with companies that have so-called unlimited plans, many of them are unlimited, but above whatever threshold they set, it's extremely rate limited. I can't speak for every country out there, but this is incredibly common here, and when you do hit that throttle point, it's usually throttling you to one to one and a half megabit a second. And assuming you're using a modern-ish display, it would likely be a 1080p stream. And at one to one and a half megabit, that is completely unusable unless the data is extremely compressed and has a horrible bit rate, making it so you don't really want to use the device anyway. But if Vodafone said, oh, well, it's not going to have a data cap for the cloud part, why do you have a data cap to begin with? If we can stream 1080p video, what, like eight plus hours a day? Why is there a data cap? I don't understand that. But let's say there is data cap, so much of the time when you're out in public, you'd be relying on public Wi-Fi. Once again, I'm speaking from the Australian experience, but on a busy day in the city, public Wi-Fi is basically unusable for anything more than maps. Maybe on a good day, you'd be able to stream audio, but that's about as far as you're getting. But there is another problem though. While modern devices are constantly sending data, Streaming video and decoding video is a whole nother question. Good luck getting an entire day from a device like this. Unless this is the most perfectly compressed footage, I don't see how that'd be possible. Unless you just stick a massive battery on it that's just not going to fit in your pocket, but I guess that's the solution. But the ultimate problem here is complete dependence on a third-party service. Sure, if the phone network is down, you can't make phone calls or SMS with a regular phone. But the device still functions. You can take notes, you record video, you can play games on it, you can still use the device. But if everything is being done over a network connection, if that service is down for maintenance, well, you just can't really do anything. If you don't have a network connection, device doesn't work, and what if that service shuts down while well, you still have the device? Well, now you literally just have a brick. And that's without even considering the data concerns, whether that be your general user data, things like your photos, videos, your credentials, or the fact that everything happening on your device is being processed on an external server. Making spying on that device absolutely rudimentary. There are still parts of many countries out there that have no mobile network whatsoever. So if you go to one of those parts, you know, on like a road trip or something, hey, your phone doesn't work. And that's super safe and super useful. I want nothing to do with cloud computing as a replacement for regular computing, as my regular phone, my computer, or anything like that. But as a supplement or for specialized use cases for like corporate software, it does provide benefits, and if that's where they want to target, more power to them. So that's going to be it for me. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Would you ever use a cloud smartphone, or would you throw it in the bin the second that someone handed it to you? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video, and if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, strongly bear, pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T and a gaming channel called Brody Robinson Plays. That's going to be it for me, so I'm out.